Welcome to Animals Wow TV. Today we'll look at the top 10 most terrifying creatures from Greek mythology. Stay until number one and see if you can answer the creature's riddle. Number 10, the Chimera. Greek mythology has a lot of characters that we're all familiar with. Zeus, Hercules, Adonis, Aphrodite, the list goes on and on. But today, we'll be looking at creatures from Greek mythology that are mostly animals or have human parts with mostly animal bodies. So no pure human-like gods and heroes here. And since we're focusing on animals, let's start with the creature that's a combination of several animals in one, the Chimera. The Chimera is a fire-breathing monster that's got the body and head of a lion, the tail of a snake, and the head of a goat protruding from its back. Looking at this terrifying creature, you can already sense that it's a harbinger of doom to humans, particularly shipwrecks and volcanic eruptions. It was first mentioned in the Iliad, but it's so weird and has become so popular, the term Chimera has come to describe any creature with parts taken from various animals. Think Frankenstein's monster with animal parts included. So it's not just movies about Greek myths like Wrath of Titans that feature chimeras. Here are some of them. Nerd. I'm a nerd. Yeah, you made a connection. <laughs> and real life chimeras are popping up as well. We already featured the top five mutant animals. Here's an addition. It's a two-headed dog that Russian scientist Vladimir Demikov created in the 1950s. The main body was a German shepherd dog with a puppy transplanted onto its back. Both dogs could move, see, smell, eat, and drink after the experiment. The two-headed dog lived for only four days, but Dr. Demikov continued his experiments, and one of his chimeras lasted for almost a month. Wonder what kind of chimeras today's scientists create? Number 9. Typhon You might be wondering how the chimera was born since ancient Greeks didn't have mad scientists then. We wondered about that too, and then we discovered Typhon. He was nicknamed the father of all monsters because he fathered several Greek monsters, like the Chimera, Hydra, and Cerberus. We'll talk about those two later. For now, we'll focus on Daddy Typhon. He was humanoid, but he had two coiled snakes instead of legs. He also had hundreds of dragons growing from his shoulders. Instead of arms, he had more dragons. He had leathery wings that could blot out the sun when spread. Fire erupted from his eyes and he was so massive that his head touched the stars. He was such a ferocious creature that only Zeus, the father of the gods, could defeat him. The war between these two led to countless earthquakes and tsunamis that devastated the earth. Zeus won, and Typhon was imprisoned in the deepest levels of Tartarus, aka Greek hell. But once in a while, he'd make humans remember him by making volcanoes erupt. Some stories say that Typhon is the reason why Mount Etna in Italy is such an active volcano. Number 8. The Griffin Like the Chimera, the Griffin is a hodgepodge of several animals. It has the body, tail, and back legs of a lion, and the head, wings, and front legs of an eagle, complete with long, wickedly sharp talons. Because it's made up of the king of beasts and the king of birds, the Griffin has long been considered a divine and majestic creature. This is why even British nobles use this creature as a symbol of power. But just because it's supposed to be a creature of intellect, it doesn't mean it's not terrifying anymore. And just like the Hippogriff from Harry Potter, which is half horse and half eagle, you need to treat the Griffin with the respect it demands. Otherwise, you might just find yourself clawed and stomped to death. Number 7. The Hydra If you're an avid Marvel Universe fan, here's a question for you. What do the Red Skull, Wilfred Malik, Baron Von Strucker, and General Hale all have in common? If you answer that they're all villains who are members of the paramilitary organization hell-bent on world domination called Hydra, then you're correct. Now, here's the second question. What does Marvel's Hydra have to do with Greek monsters? Answer, a lot. In Marvel mythology, an inhuman was created long ago that was so powerful and fearsome that it was banished to another planet. People that believe in this creature created an organization so they could bring it back to Earth. They created a symbol that's supposed to look like the creature, a skull with multiple tentacles. In Greek mythology, the Hydra is a deadly water monster with multiple heads. Its body has a venom so potent that even its breath is lethal to humans. It was hard to kill because even if you chop off its heads, it could regenerate the head and grow two more heads in its place. 
The famous hero Hercules, or Heracles in Greek, managed to kill it by chopping off a head and burning the decapitated spot. Because its flesh was cauterized, the Hydra could not regenerate a new head. Number 6. The Harpies Since we've talked about Marvel, did you know that the year before Iron Man launched the Marvel Universe into the stratosphere, Stanley produced a film called Harpies? It's about an ex-cop who becomes a museum security guard and then finds a magical obelisk that can control harpies. What are harpies, you ask? They're monstrous birds with female heads that have lots of really sharp teeth. They're supposed to be wind spirits that got turned into Zeus's tool to punish humans. The word harpy means that which snatches, and harpies love to snatch away food and people to torture them. They also snatch away the dead and bring them to the underworld. Now don't confuse the harpies with the harpy eagle. For one thing, the harpy eagle is real. It's one of the biggest and most powerful eagles in the world. It's a very rare animal and considered almost extinct. This species got its name when the scientists who first described it called it vulture harpirja, harpy vulture. We're halfway through. Are you liking this video? Then please take a moment to like and subscribe to our channel. Remember to hit the notification button for regular updates of our informative and exciting animal videos. Number five. Charybdis and Scylla. We're sort of cheating here because we're featuring not one, but two Greek mythological creatures. But it's hard to separate the Charybdis from the Scylla because they terrorize the same narrow strait. Okay, imagine living in ancient Greece where the way to get to other places is mostly via sailboats. But one day, you need to go through a narrow sea passage with two monsters at each end. Wouldn't you merge them together in your head? Anyway, no one really knows what the Charybdis looks like. It's been described as a ferocious sea monster that lives under a rock. It loves to swallow large amounts of water, which leads to monstrous whirlpools forming at its part of the strait. These vortexes are so big and deadly that they can destroy even large ships in an instant. Meanwhile, the Scylla is another sea monster, but this one has several heads that love to eat sailors who travel too close to its lair. These two beasts always go together. And that there's even a phrase between a Charybdis and Scylla. It's the equivalent of saying stuck between a rock and a hard place, which means being trapped between two dangerous decisions. Not something you'd want to happen to you in ancient Greek or in today's world either. Number four, the Gorgons. And here's another grouped set of monsters. Even if you're not into Greek myth, you've probably heard about Medusa. She's the monster with a snake's tail instead of legs and venomous snakes instead of hair. And her eyes are so deadly that she can turn people into stone with just a glance. Not a lot of people know that Medusa has sisters. Together, they're called Gorgons. Some stories say that they're sisters of the Chimera and children of Typhon. Other stories say they're children of a sea god. All three have the same stone-turning power, but Steno and Eurylee were immortal and Medusa was mortal. Medusa was killed by a hero called Perseus, but even after her death, her decapitated head could still turn people to stone. Fun fact, the famous luxury fashion brand Versace uses Medusa's head as its symbol because the brand's founder, Gianni Versace, wanted to lure people to his products the way Medusa lured people to her lair. On the Number three, Cerberus. During ancient Greek times, dogs or hounds were not pets. They were wild and savage creatures that would hunt just like wolves did. The hound's bad rep led to the creation of the nightmarish creature called Cerberus. The massive, three-headed hellhound with a serpent's tail, a mane of snakes, and lion's claws. Cerberus guards the entrance to the underworld, so the dead can't go back to the living world, and the living doesn't disturb the dead. He'd let dead souls pass through the gates unscathed, but he'd ravage spirits that try to escape the underworld. Cerberus has become so integrated into pop culture that he's featured in lots of work. You've probably seen a lot of them already. Number two, the Minotaur. If they were alive today, writers of Greek legends would probably earn a fortune writing Korean horror movies. So here's an example. Once there was a girl named Europa, whose name is the origin of Europe. Because she was such a beauty, Zeus kidnapped her in the form of a white bull and got her pregnant. Since Europa was married to a king but didn't have a son with the guy, her son Minos got the throne by striking a deal with Poseidon, the god of the sea. 
Minos asked Poseidon for a bull as a symbol that his claim to the throne was approved by the gods. In return, he promised to sacrifice the bull back to the god. Minos got the bull and the throne, but he showed how greedy he was by breaking his promise. Everyone knows that if you cross the god, you'll get something nasty in return. Poseidon made Minos' wife fall in love with the bull and bear the animal's baby. Thus, the Minotaur was born, a creature with the head of a bull and the body of a man. Minos was so embarrassed and angry at what happened that he had a complicated labyrinth made and imprisoned the Minotaur inside it. But the Minotaur kept making a nuisance of itself, so Minos decreed that 14 young men would be sacrificed to the beast each year. The Minotaur was eventually killed by a hero who infiltrated the sacrificial group. See what we meant about convoluted horror K movies? The legend of the Minotaur could give this classic a run for its money. Number 1. The Sphinx Some cultures have similar mythological creatures. For example, have you ever been to Egypt? Even if you haven't, you've probably seen this before. It's called the Great Sphinx of Giza, and it's the oldest known monumental sculpture in the world. Unlike the Egyptian Sphinx, which looks male, the Greek Sphinx is usually depicted as female. But both of them have the head of a human, the body of a lion, and the wings of an eagle. And they're huge, like monstrously huge. The Greek Sphinx is also known for being merciless and eating those who don't answer her riddles correctly. And speaking of riddles, we'll end this feature with the Sphinx's most famous riddle. What walks on four feet in the morning, on two in the afternoon, and on three in the evening? Share your answer in the comment section below. There you have it, our top 10 most terrifying creatures from Greek mythology. Remember to share your answer to the riddle in the comment section below. Don't forget to click the like button and to subscribe to our channel. And while you're here, you might want to check out our video on the top 10 largest chickens in the world you never knew existed.